Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to help you stop burning leads and show you how to fire up your bookings and your sales. I'm Mark McIntosh and I'm here with Renee Roberts and we're with Team Wedding Marketing. Have you ever wondered why your marketing does not bring you as many leads as you think it should? Do you think that you could increase your sales and grow your business if you could just get more leads? The reality is that you have plenty of leads but you're losing a lot of them before you even know they exist. So why is that? Well, over here on the left, we have the newly engaged couple. And on the right, we have you. That interaction between the two of you, we like that to be a straight line. But what happens so many times is that that line looks something more like this. If you can remove the obstacles that stand between awareness and the sale, you will improve your customer journey and make your sales process infinitely easier. We work with a lot of wedding pros and most of them come to us with the same challenge. I need more leads. First of all, you don't need more leads. You need more sales. Second, most wedding pros have plenty of leads. They just don't know it. We all know the concept of the sales funnel. You pour leads into the top of the funnel and then sales come out of the bottom of the funnel. The problem is most wedding pros don't have a sales funnel. They have a sales colander. Most wedding pros are pretty successful at creating awareness. They do a lot of advertising. They get a lot of referrals. They exhibit at wedding shows. They create awareness, but then pour the leads into a colander. The lead leaks out somewhere in the process, and that lead was lost without you even knowing it existed. That's called burning leads. When you burn leads, you're burning money. Now, there is no such thing as a free lead. Every lead has a cost. Now, that cost could be money, or that cost could be time, which you have to value your time, or it could be a combination of both. Posting on Instagram and Pinterest doesn't cost you any money, but doing it right takes a lot of time. Buying ads on the wedding website costs a lot of money, but can bring you leads without spending a lot of time. Referrals probably have the lowest cost of all, but they still require time to nurture the relationships that bring you referrals. Now, if you have a lot of time to invest in promoting your business, you don't need to spend as much money. Now, if you have money to invest in promoting your business, you don't need to spend as much time. Now, if you don't have time or money to invest in your business, you probably won't have very many leads. When faced with a lot of choices, couples use a process they call subtractive shopping. It's really quite simple, and we all do it. So let's say that I want to buy a hammer. And I go to Amazon and I search for hammer and I'm going to find 3,000 options. Well, I just need one hammer. I don't need to look at 3,000. I don't have the time to look at 3,000. So I need to start weeding them out. So in my case, I'm going to say I only want a hammer that is on Amazon Prime. So I don't have to pay shipping. I only want a hammer that has a four or five star review. I only want a hammer that is a certain size. Whatever the criteria, I'm gonna start weeding things out so I can narrow it down and then look at just a handful of hammers to choose which one that I want. So couples, they are doing exactly the same thing. So let's say I'm planning my wedding and I'm in Chicago and I'm looking for a DJ. So I'm gonna to go to the wedding planning website and I'm going to see that there are 137 options for DJs. Couples have dozens, if not hundreds of choices for everything that they're looking for, but they only have time to seriously talk to a few. They are actively looking for ways to cross you off of their list. Couples approach it in different ways. They're most likely gonna start by reading your reviews wherever they can find them. They're also going to explore your social media and find what they can find on the various platforms. They're also going to go look at your Google business profile. They'll also read over your marketing materials that they've gotten their hands on. And they'll also look at all the referral lists and see which ones you're listed on. And then they will visit your website. 
If just one of these things is lacking, if there are typos or grammatical errors on your website, or if it's November and your last Facebook post says Happy Labor Day, you've just given them exactly what they want, a reason to cross you off their list and move on to someone else. Now there is something called the rule of seven. And that says that a prospect needs to see your message at least seven times before they take an action. A lot of couples use wedding wire the knot to plan their wedding, but not all of them do. Not everyone uses Instagram or Pinterest to plan their wedding, but a lot of them do. Not everyone reads reviews, but a lot of people do. You cannot put all of your eggs in one basket. You have to be seen in multiple places. More importantly, every time a prospect sees you, they have to know they are in the right place. What happens often, you advertise on a wedding website and you design your profile. A few months later, you advertise on another wedding website and you put a different message there. Then you redesign your website and have a different message there. You get an awesome new logo, but you haven't used up all your marketing materials, so you keep using the ones with your old logo. You raise your prices, but you forget to change those prices on your wedding wire storefront. The end result is that the prospect might see you multiple places, but they are confused because of the inconsistency of your message. Now, I'm not saying that what you do on Pinterest is the same as what you do on TikTok, but you need to have marketing continuity, which is having some level of consistency in your marketing. A real easy way to find out what's out there is to Google your company and see what's going on. You might be surprised. Are your prospects experiencing marketing letdown? So I'll give you an example of what marketing letdown is. As, uh, as you may know, I produced wedding expos for years and years. And there was this cake baker that exhibited at a bunch of our shows. Now they had great looking cakes and their cakes tasted great. They were super popular at the show, but they found that over time, the results from the show were starting to slip and they just couldn't understand why. Their presence at the show was great, but the people, they looked at the cakes, they tasted these awesome cakes. Then they were handed a brochure that went into their bag and that brochure was very amateurish. Their um, website was dated. It had old, old cakes on it, hadn't been updated in a while, and they rarely posted on social media. When the prospects left the show, got home, looked into that business further, they were disappointed. They were turned off. Now, maybe you put a really catchy ad on Facebook and get some attention, or you have an awesome Instagram post that gets some traction. You get listed in a magazine as a top wedding vendor. You wow the prospective customer somehow, but then your other marketing does not have that same wow factor. They get confused and they bounce out. Everyone likes to buy. No one likes to be sold. Selling implies that you are using persuasive tactics to get someone to buy something that they don't want, don't need, or isn't exactly right for them. This leads to unfulfilled expectations, bad reviews, buyer's remorse, and quite often, seller's remorse. When you identify your right fit client and offer them the ideal solution to their need, you don't have to sell, you just tell. Your goal is simple. You want the prospective customer to say, that's me and I need that. Do you know why your customers buy from you? Now, if I ask you to give me 10 reasons why your company is great, you'd probably give me 15. But chances are that there are only two or three of those reasons that are driving the vast majority of your sales. Success leaves clues. Ask your customers why they chose you over everyone else. Figure out what those two or three things are, those things that are driving those purchase decisions, and then build your entire marketing program around them. Show the prospect what they get from you they can't get anywhere else. Show them what they lose when they don't choose you. And set yourself up so that the prospect cannot make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. 
Now, wouldn't it be great if you never talk to another price shopper? If you are selling something that is different than everything else, you make price shopping difficult or even impossible. What is your value proposition? Value proposition has nothing to do with having the lowest price. It has everything to do with giving the prospect a better value. It's all about one thing, what you get for what you pay. Everyone likes to feel that they got more than they paid for. It's human nature and it applies at every price point. If I'm buying a used car, I want a good deal. If I'm buying a Mercedes, I also want to get a good deal. I, I know a photographer, he was new to the business. He got into the photography business as a side hustle. It was a weekend thing for him. He just wanted to do 10 weddings a year. So he put up a nice website, he has some nice work, and then he put up a free listing on Wedding Wire. He charged only $1,000 and he filled his calendar. Now, over the course of that year, he listened to a bunch of other photographers that said, hey, you are not charging enough for your services. You are worth more than $1,000. And he listened to them. In year two, he changed his prices. He raised his prices to $2,000, but he did not change anything else. Those 10 weddings he had in the first year went to zero weddings in year two. Why'd this happen? Well, at $1,000, his value proposition was perfect. People perceived that they were getting more than $1,000. They were getting $2,000 in value for their $1,000, and he won. Now, when he started charging $2,000 and offering exactly the same thing, he was still just giving $2,000 in value. And the market said, eh, the people who were winning at the $2,000 price point were the ones who gave the impression that they were giving more than that, that perhaps they were giving $3,000 in value. You cannot just arbitrarily set your prices. It's risky to just decide one day that you're going to charge more because that could mess up your value proposition. The prospective customer doesn't really care how you set your pricing. They don't care how much profit you make. And they don't care that you have not raised your prices in years. They only care about one thing, what they get for what they pay. Make the prospective customer feel that they get a better value from you than they get from anybody else and you will win. Now, if your competitor's value proposition is better than yours, then they will win. The easiest way to convert more of your leads into sales is to start with better leads. Find out which forms of marketing are bringing you the best leads and do more of that. You should always be asking prospects how they found out about you. Some of them will tell you that they found you on your website. There are 1.7 billion websites. No one just finds your website. They find you somewhere else and then go to your website. Your website never brings you a lead. If they typed in your URL, they found it somewhere else first. If they clicked a link, they found that somewhere else first. Your website is not advertising. Advertising is what you do to bring people to your website. There's something called last touch attribution, and it's important. We talked earlier about the rule of seven, where they probably saw your message more than once. When you ask the how did you find out about us question, they are probably going to tell you the last place they heard about you. In a lot of cases, you need to dive deeper to get the data you need. You should always pay close attention to your Google Analytics. Pay attention to three things. Number one, where is your website traffic coming from? Don't rely on what the wedding websites are telling you. See for yourself. Also look at your bounce rate. How many users go no further than your home page? And number three, what is your average session length? How long are people staying on your site once they get there? All right, now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm going to share with you the number one wedding planning resource. It's not one of those big wedding planning websites. 
it's not Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest. It's not TikTok or Snapchat or YouTube. I'm going to share with you now. It's important. Write this down. www.google. If you are not investing as much in Google as you are investing in your other forms of digital advertising, you are missing out on a valuable lead source. Everybody is on the wedding planning websites, but relatively few people are doing much with Google. I love advertising on Google, and there are five ways to promote yourself. Number one is Google My Business, now called Google Business Profile. It's fairly easy to set up, but it's not a set and forget it type of thing. You have to nurture it, make changes, ask for reviews, add pictures, change your hours, keep the love there. Google loves Google, so give it attention. Number two, there are Google search ads. It is a form of advertising that is not interruption-based. It's intention-based. They are coming to you, searching a word, and finding you when you show up in the Google ads and the search results. You only pay when someone clicks on the ad. That makes it a great bargain. Number three is display ads. There are two types. There's retargeting ads, and those are when people visit your website. You send ads back to them in different website platforms. And then there's placement ads where you actually pick, such as wedding-related websites, as um, Wedding Wire and the Knot. There's some placements on oh, there. That's a secret. We're not supposed to be oh, giving that away. Like, they have Google advertising real estate. Last time I checked on their sites. It is entirely possible to advertise there without paying them any money. But that's our secret. Let's keep it. Okay. So number four is YouTube. You can put your ad before a video or in the middle of a video. There's all types of marketing opportunities. And Google owns YouTube if you didn't know that. And finally, there's SEO. That's search engine optimization. It's a pretty simple idea. SEO lets the search engines know what is important about your site. You have to do this correctly. And SEO is not a once and done thing. It requires ongoing attention. With every change and every new blog post, it requires a tweaking to your SEO. You pay for good SEO like you pay for advertising. And it brings you leads just like advertising. It's an ongoing investment. Okay, by now you have figured out that we feel very strongly that you need a good website because that's where everything comes together. Every one of your leads, no matter where those leads came from, they are going to check out your website before they go further. It could be a referral from the prospect's best friend, but you know what? They're going to your website first. Your website is the very last thing that a prospect does before they reach out to you. You have them. The sale is within your grasp. Do not lose them. Now, spending a lot of time or money to generate leads that then go to a bad website is a whole lot like putting premium gas into a car that has no engine. So with that being the case, it amazes me that so many wedding professionals do not put their website higher on their priority list. Designing a website might sound easy. Wix, Squarespace, Show It, they all provide you the tools to do a DIY website. But buying a hammer, that hammer I bought earlier in this presentation, like that does not make me a house builder. Buying a camera does not make you a good photographer. And signing up for a Squarespace account does not make you a web developer. Most people who DIY their website focus on making it pretty. And some of them are even relatively successful. But that's only one step. There are five essential pieces to building a website that works. Number one, you need a logical path to the end result. Know what you want from your visitor. Is that a call? Is that an appointment? 
Is that a purchase? Figure out what your goal is and then make that process to that goal straightforward and easy. Of course, you do need a good graphic design. It's got to be appealing. That is an important part of it. It's got to look modern, but that's not the only part of it. And that's what so many people focus on. Number three, you need well-written copy. Now, you have two audiences for the copy on your website. Audience number one is your prospective customer. Audience number two is Google. Why are they the audience? Because the copy on your site is one of the things that Google looks at when figuring out how to rank in the search engine rankings. So you need to prioritize your SEO writing over your marketing writing. Number four, you need to have a great user experience. You want that path to your end result and you need to get them there in a logical way. Now you need to prioritize your mobile experience over your desktop experience. Now I can tell you that most web developers are building websites on a desktop monitor. But in this wedding industry, 75% or more of our prospective customers are viewing websites on mobile. So you need to make your website really mobile first. Put your focus on there because that is where most of the people are viewing it. And number five, your site needs to be good under the hood. And what I mean by that, all those things that Google looks at that are important, site speed, how fast your site loads. Security, what happens if your site gets hacked? And backup, so if your site does get hacked, you have a way to get back in business as quickly as you can. If I am building a house, I am not going to let the architect install the plumbing. And I'm not going to let the plumber pick the paint colors. Building a website works exactly the same way. It takes a team with different skill sets. And for example, like you're not gonna let the tech people design the graphics and you're not gonna let the graphic people do the tech. Different skill sets and they require different people. And if you miss even one of these essential pieces to a website, you are likely losing out on business and burning leads. Now there are five things that your website must include. These things might sound really basic to many of you, but they are missing on so many websites. We wanna make sure everyone has them because they are the foundation to a good website. Number one, are you telling people who you are and what you do? This may sound simple, but are you saying the words wedding with photographer? Make sure that those show up prominently and are mentioned several times on your homepage. Number two, where do you do business? Be very specific. Don't lead with we travel everywhere because Google won't know where to serve you and they are certainly not going to serve you everywhere. Make sure your site has testimonials. Your customers are more believable than you. Make sure they are showing up throughout your pages. And we totally recommend have a website page with all your testimonials on there. That's where you can do the longer form. Do short form little snippets in many of your different pages. And number four, your About Us page, the second most visited page on a website. Your About Us page should describe your talents, your experience, and your awards. More importantly, it is where you tell your story, you share your why, share also that you like walks on the beach, red wine, and puppies. And finally, have multiple ways on your website for them to reach you, not just the dreaded contact form that they have to fill out. Put your phone number, put your email address, make sure that they can find you. Now I'm gonna give you five things that should not be on your website. All right, number one, this is the techie geeky thing, but it is the improper header tag structure. Header tags are really simple. It tells Google or the other search engines 
what are the most important things on a particular web page. It's kind of like an outline of a project you might have done in high school. You have the header. So you have, in the case of, of web uh, headers, you have heading one. That's the most important thing on the page. You're only supposed to have one H1 tag. And then you have H2s, 3s, 4s, 5s. Now, a lot of people mess this up. They mess it up because the DIY website builders tie the two things together. They tie um, font size with header designation. Now, this is getting complicated, and I don't want to take it down this road. So if you're interested in learning more, certainly just Google it, and you will learn the proper structure for your header tags. Uh, again, the most important thing is that you should only have one H1 tag, and I see sites that have a dozen. That's confusing Google, and that does not bode well for you in the search engine rankings. All right, number two, do not have links to your wedding website listings. Now, we see this all the time. You get those awards, the Couples Choice Awards, the Best of Weddings Awards. Don't link those back to those websites. Why? Because remember what I said earlier, you have the prospect right where you want them, which is right there on your website. Why on earth would you want to send them somewhere else where they can get distracted and perhaps find one of your competitors? Number three, services not related to weddings should not be on your website. Now, I get it. People do different things. Not everybody does just weddings. And that's perfectly fine. But what I see so often is that the DJ who has 90% of their business in weddings has 90% of their website things other than weddings. Yes, you do weddings and you do parties and dances and nightclubs and schools and bar and bat mitzvahs and keats and airs. That's all okay. But let me let you in on a little secret. Couples planning for their wedding will favor businesses that specialize in weddings over businesses that don't. When faced with a company that seems to just focus everything on weddings, and then their alternative is a company that does everything and is a jack of all trades, and, and weddings happen to be one of the things that we do, who do you think is going to be favored in that decision? The one who specializes in weddings. It is entirely possible, and it's easy to have a separate brand or a separate website just for your wedding offerings and then group all of the other things together. All right, number four is something I call the talk without the walk. If you are open to same-sex weddings, don't just put a rainbow banner on your website in June. You need to show images of same-sex weddings. If you like to do beach weddings, show images of beach weddings. Now, if you want to do luxury weddings, you cannot just say, rah, rah, I do luxury weddings. You have to show luxury weddings through the look of your website and the images on your website. And number five, big mistake, selling stuff, not selling magic. When couples are planning their weddings, they're buying the end result. They're buying the magic. Most wedding pros are selling stuff. Stuff with a bullet point in front of it. You give my package includes this, 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 and this. Set yourself apart by selling a motion, not a bullet list of things. So why is all of this so important? It's impossible to truly look professional when your marketing looks amateurish. We've established that your website is the single most important piece of your sales process because it's where everything comes together. We've established that all roads lead to your website and it's the last stop before contact. And we've established that it takes a lot of different skill sets to build an effective website. So given all of that, why do wedding pros who don't have any of these skill sets think it's a good idea to build their own website? Wedding pros are constantly preaching the pitfalls of DIY to their customers. You know what it is. 
uh, when a couple even suggests that they are going to do things themselves, what do we all say? Do not DIY, use a professional. You would never want to bake your own cake. You do not want your uncle taking the pictures. You do not want your friend to be the DJ. It's your wedding day, it's the most important day of your life, da 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 da, use a professional. And then what I find so interesting is that the same people who preach that day after day after day are the ones that turn around and then DIY their own marketing designing their own website, designing their own brochures, their handouts, all of that. Of course, the reason that is usually given is I have to DIY because I can't afford to hire the professional or I don't see the value in hiring a professional. Can you see the hypocrisy in this? So what are the true costs of DIYing your website or anything else in your marketing? Well, first off, every hour you spend on your marketing is an hour that you don't have to work in your business. Instead of toiling over your website, would your time be better spent doing follow-up, getting better at what you do, or even relaxing a little bit? But you know what? There's an even bigger cost. If a prospect reaches out to you, calls you, make an appointment with you, how often can you close that sale? Can you close that sale 10% of the time? 25% of the time? Half of the time? Let's look at that. Half of the time, when you get someone to make an appointment, when you get them to come in, when you get them to call you, when you get a real good solid lead, you can sell them half the time. So if that is the case, it takes two solid leads to get one sale. So what if you got two solid leads that came to your website, didn't like what they saw, and bounced out? So that's two leads, and you didn't get one sale because they both left. Have you ever had a case where a wedding pro says, hey, I referred someone to you, and then you realize you never talked to that person? That could have very well been that that, that person visited your website and then bounced out. So if you have those two leads, if that happens twice a month, let's look at what happens. Let's say that your average sale is $2,000 and you're losing a sale every month. You're losing two leads that you would otherwise have that they're bouncing out before they reach out to you. And you lose one sale a month because of that. That means over the course of the year, you have lost 12 sales, which means you have lost $24,000 in business, all because you lost that lead. You burned that lead before they ever got to you. Now, that kind of makes that cost of that DIY marketing suddenly seem really, really expensive. Now, you probably invest a lot of money in the tools of your trade, your camera, your equipment, all of that. You invest money in education, going to conferences, making yourself better. I'd like to suggest that you look at your marketing as an investment that is equally important to everything else. Don't let anyone tell you that they fill their calendar without doing anything. With new couples entering the marketplace every week, every wedding pro has to create awareness over and over again. We don't want marketing and advertising to be dirty words, nor an admission of failure. There is no shame in actively promoting your business. Marketing and advertising are your shortcuts to a full calendar. But you don't want to spend more than you need to. You have one goal when investing in your marketing. It's really simple. You need to get the number of leads that you need to get the number of appointments that you need to get the number of sales that you want. And you want to spend the least amount of time and money making that happen. Better marketing and smarter marketing can make that happen. The best investment that you can make in your future growth is to get some help with your marketing. But it's really important that you get the right help and that you also get 
impartial help. Getting the right help means that you need to find someone who understands the wedding industry. Selling to weddings is different than selling anything else, and a whole lot of marketers don't get it. Now, getting impartial help means that you find someone who leads you in the right direction, but isn't trying to sell you on one specific advertising vehicle. Your rep at the wedding website is going to want you to spend all of your money on their website. You know what? Can't blame them. That's their job. But like we talked about before, putting all of your advertising in one place is probably not in your best interest. Remember that rule of seven. They need to see you multiple times. When you are looking for marketing help, look to someone who knows the wedding business and who wants what is best for you. Today, we covered a lot of things. We promised to show you five ways to stop burning leads. Number one, have a consistent message across all of your marketing. And we called that marketing continuity. Number two, differentiate yourself so to better attract your right fit client. And then offer a value proposition that is better than your competitors. Number four, prioritize your website as the most important part of your sales strategy. And finally, make it all happen faster with better results by getting some help along the way. Now, this industry is full of awesome wedding professionals. Now, is your marketing truly as awesome as you are? You know, engagements have not stopped. The pandemic did not slow down engagements. Jewelers are saying that engagement ring sales are crazy. But also, so many wedding pros are crazy busy right now. They're doing two years worth of weddings in just a few months. Do not let that lull you into a false sense of security. If you want to be busy next year and the year after that and the year after that, you can never, ever take your eye off of your marketing. So don't be afraid to get some help. There are lots of people out there that can help you with your marketing. People that will help get you to your goal. So keep improving, keep selling, and stay awesome. We're Mark and Renee from Team Wedding Marketing, and we would like to invite you to check us out. Visit our website at teamwedding.com. And there you can schedule a free marketing checkup. We will take a look at your marketing that you're currently doing, and we will get back to you and talk to you about some actionable steps, things that you can do to improve that and make your customer journey a better one. And we do it at no charge. And of course, at the same time, we'll talk to you a little bit about team wedding marketing and what we can do for you. Thank you for listening, everyone, and I hope to talk to you soon.